I think we really have a good time here. We try to make our store very comfortable, perhaps even a little home-like uh, for a lot of people. Hi, I'm Frank. Hi, I'm Jerry. I work at Collins More Interesting Things and Antique Mall, located at 219 West Island in Elgin. Good for That's you. Good. He's just right. a natural talker, yeah. you know? <laughs> yes, sir, yeah. I didn't say that, I said talker. <laughs> yes, I said. We used to have a vast array of antiques and collectible items, and uh, we operate on a mall concept here in our store. Uh, we have 15 independent dealers who rent space and uh, stock their own uh, areas and price their items, and we sell it for them. I think for Jerry and I, we probably, directly or indirectly, have been in the business for a long time. We've always had an interest in the business. Well, basically, I'm a coin dealer. I'm J.R. Coins. And I used to do coin shows all the time. I was a mold maker for over 40 years. I was a in Justin Molds. So basically, I like working with my hands. I can make anything. My wife and my daughter are making jewelry. I made a comment. It doesn't look that hard to me. Well, let's see you do it. I can make it better than they can now. Now he's making a, a very expensive fine line of, of ballpoint pens. The pens, I got into that because there's another faith. There's nothing I can't make. Probably the thing we enjoy most here is uh, the people we work with. We have uh, new people coming in here every day. Some of the strangest stuff in the world <clears throat> comes in here. There was a guy came by one time, he had a piano in the back of his truck. What were you thinking? Why don't you take a picture of this piano instead of driving all over town with a piano in the back of your truck, hoping somebody will buy it? Because his wife said, don't come home with it. So what are you going to do? In an area of our store, in an upper room, we have an extensive uh, World War I and II exhibit of a lot of uh, trench art items. And uh, during those wars, uh, the uh, troops spent a lot of time in the trenches. And they had a lot of time on their hands because guns weren't being fired uh, every minute. So they, they searched around the grounds around them looking for something they could make. There were a lot of uh, spent rounds of uh, ammunition and mortar shells. And uh, so we have probably the most extensive collection of those items in trench art uh, in Illinois. But there's a lot of stuff up there beyond the trench art too because there's a lot of pieces up there that are real. There's no reproductions, there's no copies, they're all real. Some of it's really elaborate, some of the artwork. I told you before, I can make anything. I can't make those. I mean, I probably could, but it would take me a long, long time. I mean, some of the engraving on there is amazing. And one of us is a sailor from World War II, and then uh, Jerry was a Marine, and I was in the Army. And uh, other than knowing some military discipline, <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> we, do yes. have a, we do have a camaraderie, though, uh, because of that, I'm sure. I think the, uh, the field of antiques and collectibles is a growing field. Today, with the economy being what it is, a lot of investors are looking for places to put money. Uh, they can't put it into a CD because they won't earn anything. So uh, art items and uh, rare antique items are a good investment for, the, uh, for your larger investors seeking to get a better return on their money. I look at it from a slightly different point of view because my opinion is stuff that was made years ago was better made. For example, this building dates from 1853. That wall up there and this wall back here, those are original walls. Brand new buildings built today are expected to last maybe 40 or 50 years. Look how long this building's been here. The stuff they made in the 30s and 40s is still usable and still workable. It's good stuff. People don't have the quality and the pride in their workmanship anymore. That's how it is. And we live in a disposable world. If something breaks, you throw it away and buy a new one. You don't try to fix it or repair it anymore. It's not worth repairing. You can buy a brand new one cheaper. Maybe made out of plastic or made in China or somewhere, but it's, you know, it's a different world now.